It's Ryan Harris here and I just wanted to do a couple of videos on how to save money when you're converting a cargo trailer. I have built a tiny house from scratch from the trailer up. I'm sitting up in my loft right now, new video location, and I'm also converting a, a cargo trailer into a travel trailer and I'm seeing that there's a lot of similarities in that build process and I'm seeing a lot of ways to both blow money needlessly and to save money. So I want to make a quick list. I actually have about 15 great ways to save money but this video is going to be if you haven't acquired your trailer yet. Um, I'll do a second video part two for if you're already started your build. So let's I'm just going to do it as fast as possible. I'm going to be checking my notes so here are my seven ways to save money on a cargo trailer conversion project if you haven't gotten started yet, if you haven't acquired the trailer. The first one is make sure you size it right. Don't underestimate the size that you'll need. I see on the Facebook groups I'm part of, people um, just buy like a 10 or 12 footer, then they put their toys in it and they realize, oh my gosh, there's not enough living space and end up having to get rid of that trailer and buy a second one. So, and that's gonna be super expensive just making sure we're still recording audio. And so don't make that mistake. Think through your lifestyle, think through the gear that you have to haul, think through the size of your family. And I would say if you have to make an error, error on going too big rather than too small. Because if you start over again, that's gonna take a huge uh, chunk out of your budget. The second one is if you are, if you haven't bought yet, try to buy used. Even if you have to be patient and wait for a great deal to come up, buy used, you can save a fortune. But if you do that, don't buy an ancient one, meaning not a moldy rust bucket, that is actually more expensive in the long run. But if you can find a travel trailer that was taken care of as less than, um, I said travel trailer, a cargo trailer, that's less than two years old, you can save a fortune. So get on Craigslist, bargain hunt, be patient, have your money ready to go. That's gonna, that leads into my next tip. Never finance your cargo trailer through a dealership. Actually, first of all, never try to finance at all because every penny that you spend on interest is wasted money. If you can't afford to pay cash, I would make a pretty strong argument that you really can't afford to start your project yet anyway. I think it's better to, just put it on pause, save up cash, because when you're operating from a cash position, you're operating from a position of strength and you can negotiate a great price. But if you're relying on credit, and especially bad credit, you're going to get roped into overpaying for a brand new trailer that's gonna instantly depreciate, and you're probably gonna make the big mistake of financing it through the cargo trailer dealership, and they do not have your best interest in mind. I don't mind sharing that I work actually for one of the country's biggest auto lenders. So I see what happens on the back end with uh, auto loans. And I can tell you, it's a little bit of a sketchy business. They generally do not have um, your best interest in heart. Uh, you will probably not get the lowest possible interest rate and that's gonna cost you money. So if you absolutely must finance, go to your local bank or your local credit union, look at all the options, including a personal loan, because interest rates on those have been really low the last year or two. You might actually find that it's cheaper to uh, get a lower interest rate and be cheaper to take out a personal loan, pay cash for your used, gently used cargo trailer than it is to actually take out a loan for like an RV or a travel trailer doing it tr traditional way. But if you have to finance, go through a credit union, not the dealer under any circumstances. They will, you know what, ov you over a barrel, okay? Um, the next one rather is that most of the upgrades are cheaper if you do it instead of having the dealer do it. I know it's tempting to say, hey, just put in a window here or there, the AC here and there. Um, but if you look at how much it actually costs for the parts and, and your labor is probably free, if you're somewhat handy, it's going to be much cheaper for you to do it yourself and you're going to get it done right because the dealers, the builders, the manufacturers, they are notorious for doing a half-assed job that you're gonna end up having to redo anyway. And if you're gonna have to redo it anyway, you might as well do it right the first time. That will save you money. So think about what upgrades you need and figure out which of those you can actually handle yourself and only allow the dealer to do the upgrades on the ones that you absolutely can't do yourself. Or better yet, just find a great deal on a used cargo trailer and take whatever upgrades are in it and if it doesn't have it, you can add it in later, okay? The next one is make a budget, and you do that by listing out 
everything that you need. If you need a spreadsheet of all the things that you're going to purchase, let me know because I'm building one and it really adds up, okay? But make it a game. Most people hate budgets. They don't want to do it. They don't want to follow it. But if you make it a game and just adopt a good attitude about it and think, hmm, I want to do a cargo trailer and convert it and spend under $10,000, let's say, then it just becomes a game of how affordably can I do this? Where can I get the cheapest materials? Um, how can I save money? And if you just come at it with that attitude that it's a game, you'll have fun with it and you will save money. But you can only really do that effectively if you create a budget on paper and by figuring out all those hidden little costs. Because once you start doing a budget and listing things out in a spreadsheet, you'll notice things that you hadn't even thought of before. All those little expenses like, you know, the, the glue and the fasteners and the screws and the, the lap sealant and light switches, things like that add up really fast. So make sure you've spreadsheetified your entire build so that you are got a good sense of the accurate cost. And then you might identify some ways to where you can trim. You might see that you're coming in way over what you thought it would be. And therefore you need to either scale back or trim back, maybe do a simpler shower, maybe go with a smaller cargo trailer. Although, as I said earlier, I don't really recommend that, but set a budget, list it all out and make it a game. That's probably the single biggest tip I can give you right there on how to save money on a cargo trailer conversion. Okay. And here's another one. This came in real handy when I was building this tiny house on wheels. If you haven't bought your trailer yet, start collecting all of the fixtures, the doors, the windows, the screens, the sink, the electrical outlets, the shower enclosure, if you're going to have it, a camping toilet or whatever kind of toilet, all of those things. If you start looking on Craigslist, like in the materials section or let go app or any of those types of sources, or maybe a habitat resale store, I'm going to cover some of these in the next video. So if you want to know where you can get materials affordably, make sure you watch part two. But if you start doing that ahead of time, before you're doing your, your trailer conversion, you can stockpile that stuff and buy when there's a bargain. So I think the real tip here is only buy when you can get a smoke and deal on some gently used materials and start collecting it instead of trying to do it afterwards. Because if you acquire your cargo trailer and you're itching to go, you're chomping at the bit to start building, you're just going to run down to Home Depot or Lowe's or a store like that and start paying full retail for stuff. And that is a way to just burn through piles of cash. So look online, buy used, buy when you're not in a rush before you start the process. That way you'll save the most money, get the best bang for your buck and have the materials on hand when you do acquire your cargo trailer so that when you then start the conversion, you're just ready to go and you already know how much you're going to spend on the process because you've acquired the vast majority of your materials. Okay. And last but not least, tip number seven is spend money on what I call foundational items. Invest in the foundational items such as your quality insulation, a really good air conditioner, the quality of the wheels, axles and tires that are on your trailer. Things like that that are actually sort of fundamental to both the longevity of your cargo trailer and or the overall livability of your cargo trailer. Um, for me personally here in Texas, a really good air conditioner and a really good vent fan that are not loud and that are also effective is worth splurging on. And in the long run, I know I'll get more pleasure from the cargo trailer overall by choosing to invest my limited funds into those types of things versus other things like the, you know, a specific countertop or a specific sink or a, a 40 inch television or something like that. So think foundational frame, wheels, axles, insulation and, and you know, temperature control like that um, in air conditioning. So those are my seven tips. Um, if you haven't acquired a cargo trailer, I hope these helped you just think through these things and in the long run, you will save a ton of money. But if you've already started, uh, I'll put a link somewhere on this video uh, to part two. So uh, subscribe to the channel, please. That would help support me. Like the video if you thought it's been helpful. In addition to, if you have your own tips of ways that you found to save money and you want to share them with others, leave them in the comments uh, down below of this video to help other people. Okay. Thanks so much. I'll see you in part two. Bye-bye.